In comments to some of my prior videos about the Tascam Model 12, I have been asked, how does one actually conduct a bounce inside of this device? This is a reasonable question for a few reasons, including because the Model 12's manual does not call a bounce a bounce. And because the process is somewhat obscure if you're just like looking at the face of the Model 12. I'm working on a project and I need to free up some tracks by bouncing. So I'm going to perform that bounce for you and show you every step in the process. The real secret of bouncing in the Model 12 is to know what hides underneath this fader. Most of the time that you're using this device, when you move that fader, you're gonna control the volume of what's coming out of the main output, but it also kind of has a secondary function. The truth is that Tascam has also assigned two tracks, or one stereo track, to this fader. Even though there's no label for it, this is where tracks 11 and 12 live. Now, I may be wrong about this, but I don't think you can record to those tracks directly. Instead, they exist and are reserved for bouncing, and this is how it works. For context, let me start by explaining what you would do if you wanted to record, say, to track five. You would plug in a source, set the input levels, and you would hit this record button so that it begins to flash before hitting the little circle record button over here. Same goes for recording to any of the other tracks, one through nine, 10. But what if you want to record to tracks 11 and 12 that are hidden under the main fader? There isn't an input in the back for those tracks, and there's not a blinky record button for you to select. That's why I think it's not possible to record an external source onto these tracks, but it is still possible to perform a bounce of what you've already recorded to those tracks. The way that you do it is simply by pressing the record button without having selected any of the specific other tracks slash channels to receive the recording. When you do that, the sound that is being routed to the main fader via each of these little main toggles, all those sounds will be summed to tracks 11 and 12. And then when you hit stop to end the recording, you will have a bounced track living on tracks 11 and 12. But don't take my word for it, let me show you what I mean. Because of my current goals in this project, I'm only going to bounce the contents of tracks four, six, and nine. Down to the main fader, tracks 11 and 12. In order to do that, I'm going to select only four, six, and nine to be routed to the main fader. If I selected any of these other tracks, like track one, which is an acoustic guitar, then that would also be routed to the main fader when I do this bouncing. Right now I have the main fader connected to these studio monitors. A nice way to check whether I've selected the right things is to just play back what has been routed to that output. And as I hoped, it's just the sound of a hi-hat, a fake kick drum, and a shaker and snare. Now that I've selected those tracks to be routed to the main fader, the next step is to make sure that I've set all of the controls, the parameters of those tracks in the way that I want them. And I've already done that, so I'm not gonna touch anything, but if you wanted to do further EQing or compressing or panning before your bounce, this is the time. Once those parameters have been set, you can proceed with the bounce itself by pressing the record button. Now, what I love about this is that it's going to create a bounced or summed track over here on secret tracks 11 and 12. Those secret tracks are like an empty space that is always available for a bounce, meaning that I don't have to make any of these empty or overwrite any of them in order to perform the bounce. I think everything's set, so I'm just going to do the bounce now. And that's the end of the sounds that I'm trying to bounce. I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra breathing room and then I'm pressing stop. The next step for me would be to see if I like the sound of what I've recorded on tracks 11 and 12. Now, as I mentioned before, it's hard to access those tracks just from the face of this device. And in fact, you can't do that. You can't just press play and play back only what's hidden on tracks 11 and 12 because if I press play and move the main fader, I'm really gonna be getting the volume of things that have been routed to the main fader. But I can still play back the results of my bounce. I just have to find it in the menu. I press the menu button right here and then use the multi-jog wheel to scroll down to stereo mix export. If you select that option, you will come to a screen that says export main stereo wave file. Are you sure? I'm gonna hit yes. What this does is creates a .wave file 
from whatever you've recorded onto tracks 11 and 12 and saves it to your SD card. Does this take up extra space on your SD card? Yes. Is it an annoying extra step? Yes, but it doesn't really take that long to do. It doesn't really take up that much space. And I think that it's a fair compromise to make in order to avoid having to bounce onto these valuable tracks. After it finishes exporting, then you can go back to the main menu and scroll down to the option that says SD play. If you click it, it'll give you a little message that says that it's gonna play on tracks nine and 10. And then I'm seeing the name of my session, which is Old Flame One Mix. It's given it a name, let's press play. Sounds like I expected. Now I know that I like what I've bounced, but it's still living over here on this basically inaccessible track. How do I make it more accessible so that I can use it in my further recording? Well, to do that, the next step is to perform what's called a swap in this device. I click menu again. I go to the option for MTR. That stands for multi-track recording. Click it and then click track edit. Of the three options, go down to track swap. I'm given an option A and an option B. What this is essentially going to do is take two tracks of my choosing and flip them. I could pick tracks three and five and flip them. Why would I do that? I, I have no idea. But I can also pick two tracks like track 910 and track 1112. And when I swap those tracks, the contents of this, which is just a shaker and a snare, will end up over here in the secret land of inaccessible sounds. And my bounced track, which contains not only the contents of track 910, but also track six and four, will end up over here on track 910. So I'm going to, for option A, select 910. And then for option B, I'm going to select tracks 11 and 12. Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. If we hit menu a few times to go back to our main screen, let's mute everything except for tracks nine and 10. Press play and voila. And then for me, the last step of a bounce is to clear the tracks that I no longer need so that I can use them freely for further recording. You find the track clear function by clicking menu, going to the MTR option, clicking track edit, and then going to track clear. I'm going to clear track number four first, and then I'm going to clear track six. Oh, for that old flame to let me go. Now I've got my entire song, even if tracks four and six are out of the picture. And that's good because I have a lot more work to do. Now, the point of this video was to treat this process as though it was a bounce, like the kind that you would have to perform in an old 424 Porta Studio. But this is also the process you would use to create a final mix down of your finished recording. Except after you export the contents of your mains, fader, slash tracks 11 and 12 to the SD card, you would stop because at that point you would have a dot .wav file of your final mix down on your SD card. I won't claim to be a great teacher, but I hope this video is useful and gives you an idea of how to actually perform bounces using the Model 12. As I said before, it's not that clear or intuitive from the face of the device, but once you've done this a couple of times, it does make sense on some level. And at least I appreciate that there's real overlap between the process that you use for performing a bounce and the process that you use for performing a final mix down. I think that simplifies things, but your mileage may vary. And I am curious what you think about the way that they have designed the Model 12 and about this half-assed instruction video. Let me know in the comments. As always, I really appreciate your time. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you around. Oh, one more note about bouncing. I'd kind of forgotten about this until I was playing back my own song for my own enjoyment. Um, You'll see that I've had to set the fader on channel 910, like really, really high. And that's because the volume levels that you use in your tracks when you perform the mix down, they affect the volume of the file that's recorded and saved there and that was ultimately ba bounced back into my main session. Because I didn't have the levels high enough, the volume of the resultant file was kind of low. This is a digital medium, so I'm not as worried about signal to noise, but it is sort of annoying to have to be like, really pushing the fader on this track, what I'm really gonna end up doing is mixing this at a more uh, natural and neutral position and having to turn down some of the other sounds. Again, probably not a huge issue, but something I thought I would flag. And that's really it, I promise. I'll see you later.